Hi, everyone, and welcome to Microbial Minutes. This is the American Society for Microbiology's sessions on what's hot in the microbial sciences. Today is the second HIV cure edition. It's March 12, 2019. I'm Julie Wolf, uh, the science communication specialist here at ASM. Let's dive right in. On our second slide, we'll see that we are going to talk about a second patient who has been cured of HIV. This was uh, based on a report that was published in Nature, and if you have access to this report, it's an accelerated article preview, meaning that it has been peer-reviewed, but perhaps not copy-edited um, quite yet to the publishing standards. That, sa that said, the um, data is still quite good, um, and this second patient uh, and the announcement of this cure in the second patient comes 12 years after the first patient was announced to be free of HIV. That patient, the Berlin patient, um, and this patient were both cured by medical interventions. HIV itself has never been naturally eradicated in a person based on the immune system clearing the infection. Uh, this has posed a lot of challenges both in treating and the, the disease and in creating a vaccine. You can hear more about that if you want um, in an interview I held with Dan Baruch, who is one of the scientists who is conducting clinical trials of HIV vaccines. We'll have a link down below. Now that Berlin patient, um, Timothy Brown, uh, came forward with his name and was de-identified because he became a huge advocate for um, HIV research. Uh, and the way that his HIV was cured, and I'm going to kind of put cured in quotation marks here, is the same way that this patient, or very similar to the way that this patient's um, HIV was cured. In his case, Timothy Brown was a, an HIV positive patient whose HIV was under control uh, using antiretroviral therapy, but he developed acute myeloid leukemia, and this leukemia required treatment. To treat the leukemia, um, he received two allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplants, and those, the, the donor for the transplant was screened to be very specific in the allelic sequence for CCR5. There are naturally occurring mutations called CCR5, Delta 32, that are truncated um, uh, gene alleles that uh, diminish the ability of HIV to get inside of cells. So HIV uses CC, um, uh, sorry, uses um, CD4 as its receptor and CCR5 as its co-receptor. And most HIV strains use CCR5. Um, and if that CCR5 is not present, the HIV virus has a harder time getting inside of that cell. Now, Timothy Brown had a couple of different um, complications. First, he received an allogeneic um, stem cell tra transplant from this donor, and then he underwent rejection and had to receive a second uh, transplant from the same donor. Before each of these different uh, transplants, he did undergo total body irradiation, meaning that all of his white blood cells, uh, as well as all of the quickly dividing cells, such as epithelial cells, were eliminated by this um, irradi irradiation treatment. And because of these various steps that were involved in this complex process, it's very difficult to pinpoint what the most important step was in eliminating HIV within Timothy Brown. Is it the fact that he had two different um, transplants? Is it the total body irradiation? Is it, of course, uh, the, the donor, the specific donor, likely plays a, a role, but how important is that role? Uh, and so this is starting to be addressed based on the second patient, uh, as we can see in the next slide. This second patient, who uh, for the time being is referred to as the London patient, also received an, allo, uh, an allogeneic um, stem cell transplant, but this patient received only a single transplant. transplant. And I should um, preface this by saying that the London patient also was an HIV-positive patient who developed leukemia and required the, the transplant for treatment of the cancer, not necessarily for treatment of the HIV infection itself. But this patient, the London patient, received a single transplant and no total body um, irradiation. Uh, and as you can see from the timeline that's included in the Nature article, uh, 16 months after this uh, treatment, they were able to stop antiretroviral therapy, so to remove the, the anti-HIV drugs, and the patient has maintained low levels of HIV since. So in the past 18 months, um, the, there has been no detectable HIV RNA within the patient's blood. The cells, when they are taken out, if white blood cells are removed from the patient and stimulated to generate virus, uh, no virus, no infectious virus particles can be generated. Uh, 
And the antibody levels against HIV have diminished within the patient to the levels that had been seen previously, um, which dropped also in Timothy Brown. The authors of this report conclude that um, the report here itself demonstrates that the number one, the Berlin patient, was not an anomaly. Number two, the remission of HIV infection can be achieved with reduced intensity of drug regimens. Number three, that a single um, stem cell transplant with that CCR5 Delta 32 donor is sufficient. And number four, that total body irradiation is not required. Uh, they go on further to say that the observations support the development of HIV cure strategies based on preventing the expression of CCR5 co-receptor. Uh, and that would be, of course, specific for the HIV strains, which use CCR5 as its co-receptor. As we'll see in the final slide, this was written up in a number of different outlets. There was um, an excellent uh, write-up of questions they have about how this second patient cure may affect the rest of the HIV-infected population, uh, written up in the New York Times. Uh, and if CCR5 sounds a little bit familiar to you, uh, that's because it has been in the news for other reasons. The uh, genome-edited babies, which were born in China back in November, also had their CCR5 gene um, edited, specifically edited. And Wired has a nice summary of the CCR5 uh, news stories in addition to this HIV cure patient who has been discussed recently. That's going to do it for this Microbial Minutes session. I'd like to thank Ray Ortega for our podcast production. If you want to get more of our Microbial Minutes updates, please subscribe. Uh, hit that subscribe button right there. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll speak with you next time.